Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be simplifying a radical expression. I'll be presenting two methods, even though there's more than two methods. Maybe if we have time left, we can kind of quickly talk about those as well. So first method. So I do have the square root of a radical expression. So I'm going to try to denest this expression because it's kind of like a nested square root. And to, to be able to do that, I'm going to assume that this expression inside the radical is a perfect square. All right, so let's go ahead and do the following. I'm going to write this expression. I want this to be, in other words, the square root of square root of a plus the square root of b squared. Make sense? So how does that work? If a and b are positive, square root of a and square root of b are real numbers and positive, their sum is positive. So when I take the square root, it's going to be a positive or expression or just a sum. So inside the radical, I'm going to have something like this, a plus b plus 2 times the square root of ab. And this is what I want to set my expression equal to. Make sense? And how can I do that? So to be able to do that, notice that I have the 13 inside the radical. So this is the radical piece, which should equal that piece. And this is the part that should equal 17. Make sense? OK. Now, how do I do that? Well, I kind of need to do the following. First of all, I need to break down this expression. So if 2 times the square root of AB is equal to 4 times the square root of 13, then from here the square root of AB is equal to 2 times the square root of 13, or I can write this as AB equals 4 times 13, which is 52. So I kind of have like two numbers whose product is 52, and from this the sum will be 17. Make sense? So I basically got to find two numbers whose product is 52 and whose sum is 17. Kind of like solving a trinomial or trying to factor a trinomial by finding those two numbers, right? Very similar. So how do you do this? Uh, guess and check will work nicely. Or if you want, you can turn this into a quadratic equation. From the second equation, you can isolate b, write it as 17 minus a, and then go ahead and plug that in here. That gives you a times 17 minus a equals 52 and then 17a minus a squared equals 52 and this is what I mean by the trinomial where it comes down to finding two numbers whose product is 52 and whose sum is negative 17 and obviously you don't have to follow that method because that's going to bring you back to square one you can also use the quadratic formula so to use the quadratic formula a equals negative b plus minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac, which is 4 times 52, and then divided by 2. 4 times 52 is what? 208, right? So you're going to go ahead and subtract 289 minus 208, which is going to give you 81, by the way. That's a perfect square, and that's perfect. So the square root of 81 is just going to be 9 divided by 2. From here, you get two solutions. Why? Let me tell you. Because A and B are interchangeable. Either A is going to be 17 plus 9 over 2, which is 13, or 4. And again, A and B are interchangeable, so their product or their sum is 17. So if one is 13, the other one is 4, vice versa. OK? Make sense? So let's go ahead and see how that turns into our problem. So we basically have the following, square root of 17 plus 4 times the square root of 13 equals square root of A plus square root of B. Make sense? OK. Now here's what we're going to do. A is 4, B is 13, or vice versa, doesn't matter. We're going to get the following as our answer. OK? Make sense? I hope it does. So, by the way, I forgot to do one thing. Square root of 4 plus square root of 13, and that will be 2 plus root 13. My bad. 
Okay, so that will be the answer. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the second method and maybe we can briefly talk about the third method. So second method is very similar to the first one, kind of similar in the sense that we're going to set this equal to something. Okay? Now, I noticed that the expression inside the innermost radical is 13, so I'm just going to assume that this can be written. Did I use x and y before? I don't think so. Let's go ahead and write it as follows. x plus y root 13. Now, why am I assuming that? Well, this is not always going to work because if you have square root of 6, that's a different story, and we can kind of um, talk about it later. But uh, since 13 is prime, this should work well. So I'm going to square both sides. So we get an equation like this. Do you like it? Hopefully you do. So from here we get the following. The radical part equals the radical part. So kind of like polynomials. So we can basically say that, hey, this is supposed to be 4 and this is supposed to be 17. So x squared plus 13, y squared is 17, and xy is equal to 2. So you're kind of thinking about two numbers whose product is 2. And if those numbers are integers, they have to be like 2 and 1. And actually 2 and 1 works nicely because 2 squared plus 13 is equal to 17. So that checks 2 and 1 work. And remember our expression was assumed to be x plus y root 13. So we can basically write this as x plus y root 13. And here the uh, problem is, I mean I shouldn't call it a problem, but Notice that the difference between the first and second solutions is the uh, x and y are not interchangeable. They're fixed because one of them is the coefficient of uh, square root of 13 or the number that multiplies it. So x is 2 and y is 1. So the, this is going to be the answer. Now let's briefly talk about the third method. And this is what I'm thinking about the third method. You can basically write this as, you know, something like x plus uh, maybe x plus y root 13 or you could go with square root of a plus square root of b doesn't matter that much and then write its conjugate and then set it equal to the conjugate of the right hand side like this and then go ahead and multiply these square them so on and so forth and you're going to get a nice nice system from there all right that makes sense and this brings us to the end of this video thank you for watching i hope you enjoyed it please let me know don't forget to comment like and subscribe i'll see you next time with another video until then, be safe, take care, and I just want to say something. Uh, instead of setting these equal to uh, different things, here's what you can do. I think this is what I meant by the third method. You can go ahead and add these conjugates, call it something, like let's say x, and then their difference, call it something else, and then go from there. And this really brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.